Hello and welcome to the Pico NVH Noise, Vibration and Harshness video. My name is Steve Smith and I'm the Pico Auto Application Specialist in the UK. Today we're going to connect the Pico NVH kit to this vehicle to measure a customer complaint of vibration. Now the Pico NVH kit is non-intrusive. We do not have to disconnect any components or interrupt any circuits. Connecting to the vehicle with the Pico NVH kit is a straightforward process. We need Picoscope and we need the three output interface. Three output interface connects to Picoscope via the BNC to BNC leads. Now that's A, B and C to X, Y and Z on the interface. USB lead to connect to the laptop. And then we need the accelerometer. Now this is a three axis accelerometer, magnetic base, with the screw thread facing forward if we want to measure or identify all axis of vibration. This will locate to the driver's seat bolt. Vertical position, screw thread facing forward. And then the final connection is to the three output interface box. And note that when you connect the accelerometer, that the red LED is flashing. That indicates that you have good battery, good power supply inside the interface. Please also note that if you leave the accelerometer connected over a long period of time, you'd eventually discharge the battery inside the interface. Now to obtain engine speed and road speed, we need the Mongoose interface lead. So this is OBD to USB. So USB into the laptop, into the OBD connector, and that is the connection complete. So we're now connected to the vehicle, accelerometer is to the seat bolt, the OBD connector is located, and we're ready to operate the software so we can set up for the MVH road test. NVH software is found within the Pika Diagnostics. So we click on NVH and we want to start a new test. So we'll follow the software wizard. Start a new test. First question, how do we want to obtain engine speed, road speed? Well, that's via the OBD connector, J2534 OBD interface. And Mongoose is now attempting to connect to the vehicle. Once connected, we have the green tick. We have the VIN number of the vehicle. We have engine speed recorded live. Next is engine configuration, which is an inline, cylinder, inline four cylinder engine. It's a rear wheel drive and the software has remembered the previous settings, which happened to be this vehicle. Well, the differential ratio was 2.81. Tire size, now this is uh, important that you actually enter the tire size in the correct format. So that's 225 forward slash 50 and it's a capital R 17. Which interface are we using? Well, it's the three channel and we're using that with a TA143 three-axis accelerometer. Remember the three-axis accelerometer it measures vibration in three-axis. That's the x-axis, which is fore and aft, the y-axis, which is the vertical, and the z-axis, which is the lateral. Now, if we were to tap the chassis here, you can see that the accelerometer is responding. So we have good connection. And there's a reminder there that we attach the accelerometer to the driver's seat bolt. We use the drivers because often it's the driver who's complaining of the vibration. If you can mount it on a inner seat bolt, that's toward the center of the vehicle, that is better for a general central point of vibration. Accelerometer must be mounted vertical and with the screw thread facing forward. That way you'll be able to measure uh, accurately the vibrations in all three axes. And that is the setup process finished. We're now ready for a road test. I can start recording here. We'll switch to bar graph. We'll auto scale. 
So we can see that vibrations from the engine here, E1 and E2 vibrations, which I'll explain later. And if I just accelerate the engine, you can see here the change in engine speed in the signal history. And if I were to tap the floor there, you can see the vibrations detected by the accelerometer. And to stop recording, hit the stop button. Okay, so here we are on the MVH road test, and sure enough, we're at 45 miles per hour now, and I can feel the vibration in the car. I don't know whether you can hear that in my chest as well. Um, yeah, the steering wheel is starting to vibrate. Um, yeah, so certainly sort of 45 to 50 miles per hour is the sweet spot. Looking at the software, we can see there that we've got a T1 vibration, uh, 25 milli-g approximately in the fore and aft. And I'm just going to bring this speed down a little bit again, that back down to 50. Yeah, we're up to 30 milli-g now, so it would appear that the sweet spot of that vibration is around 30 miles per hour. And there's the steering wheel shaking. Let's just increase the speed now. Let's take this up to 60. Let's reduce slightly the vibration. And now we're at 70. And now let's brake and reduce back down. Yeah, down to 55. Coming down to 50. So we'll pause the software at this point, and now we want to try and locate the corner of the vehicle responsible for that T1 vibration. So the quickest way to do that is to um, pull over and uh, reposition the accelerometer. So we'll now position the accelerometer on the outside of the vehicle, or the inside depending, but we'll go for the right hand front and see what the vibration level is under the same driving conditions. Uh, but with the accelerometer mounted at that point on the vehicle. So after repositioning the accelerometer, ensuring that it is still in the vertical position and the screw thread is facing forward, carry out the same road test and record the vibration level. And we can see already that the vibration level has increased. So it's still a T1 vibration, still at the same speed but the amplitude has increased dramatically. So what we can safely say there is, yes, it's a T1 vibration, and that based on the information that we have right now, is that the front right hand of the vehicle would be the offending source of that T1 vibration. So that could be wheel, tire, brake, rotor, hub assembly, it could be drive shaft if it was a front wheel drive vehicle, but ultimately we need to concentrate our diagnosis efforts on the right hand front of the vehicle. How we could uh, deduce that is the fact that we would carry out this road test by positioning the accelerometer at the four corners of the vehicle and of course the corner with the highest amplitude at that sweet spot of uh, 45, 50, 55 miles per hour uh, corner with the highest amplitude is the offending corner.